So I'm just going to introduce Liz. So Liz is a consultant for Atkins, but she has a varied background. Started her career as a geologist in the gold mines of Australia before moving into the land development industry in Perth with a strong focus on stormwater management and sustainable urban drainage systems. But then since moving back to England a few years ago, she's worked on a variety of water quality uh, and water resource projects throughout the country. And today she is here to speak to you about the Chemical Investigations Programme. So, Liz. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Helen. Hi, so, yes, I'm Liz Coulson, and I'm a consultant with Atkins. Um, I'm currently doing a lot of work with Seven Trent Water, and one of the projects which I'm managing at the moment is the Chemical Investigation Programme, which I'm going to give you an overview on today. So what am I going to talk about today? I'll tell you what is the programme, what is it, who exactly is involved, and most importantly, why are we even doing this, um, and then what it can be used for in the future. Uh, so I'll be talking for about 15 minutes, um, and then we'll have about five minutes for questions, and then I'll just summarise the presentation at the end. So a little bit of background. I assume you're all familiar with the Water Framework Directive. Um, so under the WFD, obviously all water bodies are hoping to achieve um, a good status. So ecological and chemical good status. So for a water body to achieve good status, um, it has to comply with all of the environmental quality standards that are set for a specific set of substances. Not all substances are regulated, so not all of them have these environmental quality standards. But through sort of scientific research and increase in technical knowledge, we can revise the EQSs get revised, updated, and then new standards and regulations can come in in the future. Who exactly is involved in the Chemical Investigation Programme? Well, it's a nationwide collaborative project. Um, we have 11 wastewater companies involved. Um, like I say, I'm managing the uh, CIP, I'll call it now, uh, the CIP for Seven Trent Water, but every one of these also has their own Chemical Investigation Programme. Um, the Environment Agency are heavily involved, and DEFRA, and then consultants. So Atkins, obviously I'm involved in Central Water, but there's also a Atkins team who are involved in the wider project and collating a lot of the data together. So what is the Chemical Investigation Programme? We've already completed phase one. Um, that was completed between 2009 and 2012. It's basically a massive, ambitious sampling program, uh, looking at around 45 of these regulated substances, um, looking at the final effluent from a range of uh, sewage treatment works, looking at how current technologies, um, how effective they were at removing these substances, and we looked at a range of catchment studies as well. So by doing all of this sampling program and getting this data from SIP1, we could understand the sources of these chemicals, the behavior of them through the environment and how effectively they're managed um, through the treatment works. So in SIP1, we could make comparisons to the EQSs for these substances. Um, and then from that, we could understand our risks of compliance to these substances. So SIP1 um, looked at, like I said, a range of chemicals. Um, but we also managed to get sort of a baseline um, understanding on what other chemicals should we be looking at in the future, what might be regulated in the future, and what should we start focusing on next. So that's when we come to SIP2. So we're currently in phase two. Uh, started in 2015 and it's going to continue until 2020. 
and what we're doing within it. So we've got, we're looking at the final effort from 600 uh, sewage treatment works. So we're looking at how the effluent is contributing to the water course, the receiving water courses. So we're monitoring upstream and downstream of these final effluents. We're looking at up to 10 different treatment technologies to assess their effectiveness in substance removal. Um, so SIP1 looked mainly at sort of current technologies and SIP2 we're looking at um, sort of novel technologies as well as some also current technologies. We've got an extra five catchment studies throughout the um, country. So all of this is equating to over 60,000 samples being taken. And we're monitoring for up to 75 substances per sample. So this is the currently regulated and the emerging substances that are going to be regulated in the future. And so we're going to get up to 3 million separate results. So basically a massive data set. So with this data set, we're going to be able to understand and sort of quantify the risks to compliance that are present currently in our environment. We'll also get to know sort of the sources of these risks and then uh, with the treatment um, trial technologies, we're going to be able to get some sort of costs on, um, on these new treatments and how effective they are. So um, I'll go into a little bit of detail um, about the Seven Trent Water Programme. Um, so our contractors are initial, who are the project managers for all of the sampling and analysis um, side of things. We're using NLS and I2 as our labs. Um, so I'm sort of coordinating the whole thing and then the sampling analysis is undertaken by initial. Um, so they are sampling at 128 sewage treatment works, so this is the largest um, SIP programme out of all of the water companies. Uh, so like I said before, the final effluent, the river upstream and downstream, and then we've got some sort of side investigations looking at uh, the removal of the substances throughout the sludge process. Um, our four trial sites. The first one is looking at the full range of chemicals, um, so priority substances, hazardous substances, plus pharmaceuticals and all the emerging substances, the full list. And we're looking at um, a very novel technology of algae, it's an algae bioreactor. So it's a pilot scale study and it was, um, this, it was developed by Cranfield University. Um, I'm just going to keep it at that level. <laughs> um, and then um, two other trial sites, looking not at the full suite, but we're really focusing in on phosphorus. <coughs> so the first one is a fuzzy filter site, and that is looking at just what, what can it achieve um, for phosphorus removal. The other site where we've got is a membrane bioreactor. So we know that this can perform well in phosphorus remo removal, but we're looking at how well, and we're going to push it to see how low can it go with phosphorus removal without um, affecting the compliance of the other um, chemicals that are coming out of the discharge. So <coughs> our final site is an iron-based sand filter. Uh, this is a full-scale plant, so taking the whole flow through the works, um, and we're looking at chemical and phosphorus, and it's just looking how effective is, is this. So that's seven Trent ones, and then this, um, I'm not going to go into much detail on these, but you can just see, basically, there's a wide range of sites, wide range of treatment technologies that are being assessed for the full chemical removal to see how good they are, and the sort of costs involved. And then phosphorus as a sort of separate study um, within CIP. Um, we've got a whole range of treatments um, throughout the country. So we're looking, for example, we've got um, one specific treatment is uh, going to be undertaken at two different trial sites. So we're looking at the effects of a wet region, a dry region, so sort of regional variation and how effective they perform under different conditions. 
The catchment study that we're looking at is the Arawash catchment. So it's a um, urban catchment in the Midlands. Um, we're looking at the treatment works discharges um, and then a range of other catchment inputs into the into the Arawash. Um, so combined sewer overflows, looking at runoff. Um, sort of an old mineral extraction area and also at a number of traders in the catchment. And the other four catchment studies, um, so they were, we've sort of pitched these catchment studies um, as a sort of reflection on um, all the varying different types of catchments that you can find in the country. Um, so the Oozel is a rural catchment, um, the team mixed, uh, mixed catchment, urban, rural up in the north, and then the Arrow, Arran is a typical lowland uh, southeastern river, and the Alt is um, sort of very flat and has lots of managed flows. So basically, we're just throughout the whole programme, we're just trying to capture a wide range of data from different types of catchments. So we're going to have all of this data, massive amount of data on um, all these chemicals throughout the environment. Um, we're going to have the costs of treating the chemicals and um, some information on the source of the chemicals. And so what do we do with it? So um, what we are hoping to get out of this data ultimately is the water companies um, through these trials will now know some of the effective um, treatments for the different chemicals that they're finding are perhaps the you know the risk of non-compliance is quite high for certain chemicals so how do we want to treat it um, do we want to go to the source of the problem if it's sort of a catchment study, if it's a catchment problem, or is it something that we need to treat sort of as an end of pipe solution at the works? So that's where I come to the decision support tool is going to help us do that. Um, so this is something that Atkins are currently developing. Um, it's mainly using the data from all of the different catchment studies, but it'll also be pulling in all of the information from the other um, trials and the um, river monitoring. And so it's, it's a support tool because we still are going to have the input from the water company, so their sort of um, conditions that they want to set. Um, and then puts it all into the model you can use param different parameters, so you can choose which chemicals you want to look at if they think, well, we don't have an issue with this, so we're going to leave that out of the model run or um, put in some effectiveness and costs of the treatments, turns it all up and comes out with the optimal set of measures to address the risks of non-compliance that we found with this programme. So I'm going to take this opportunity to ask there's any questions before I summarise and wrap up the presentation? If anyone has anything. No, okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll throw one in if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, Brent Hoskins, where, you mentioned the timing of this uh, 2015 to 2020. Do you uh, foresee any of this informing the next business plan or is the business plan beyond that? Um, well, the so the results of these won't be out until 2020. So um, I don't assume that it will be informing anything right now. Um, the sludge catchment and trial sites will be done by March 2017. And um, so whether that data can then be sort of in the public domain and used, then. Um, that could possibly then inform um, something, but yeah, the, the whole program as a you know, complete set won't be sort of um, yeah published until 2020. Yes, Ben. Ben is this a very specific UK initiative, or are there similar sorts of 
programs mm. looking at these chemicals and approaches in other member states? Um, I believe this is a mainly UK programme. However, I do I think there is something quite similar. Um, I mean, anyone can correct me if they want. Um, called EU Solutions, I think, which is looking at something similar um, in other countries, but I couldn't tell you the the details. There must be something in other yeah. countries because mm -hmm. under WFD, there needs to be an intercalibration of of mm -hmm. standards across the different countries. So there must be. Maybe not as de not as mm. detail. more detail or less detail. Yeah, but well, I know there is this one that you solutions, but yeah. I'm not sure what sort of level of detail yeah, it goes into this thing. SimCat, which is already used for compliance and setting. Yeah, so SimCat is one of is part of the input into the into the model. Yeah. Did you have a question? I did have one. It's a bit sort of bigger picture stuff. I hope you don't mind. No. <laughs> um, do you think that we have a good chance of achieving the targets that we need to reach in this country. Um, and following on from that, how do you feel we're performing in comparison to other EU member states? Um, good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, certainly the SIP1 data would suggest that there is um, quite a long way to go in um, achieving compliance. Yeah, but um, it also, well, SIPON also found that um, a lot of the treatments were very capable and um, sort of 80 to 90% removal of these chemicals. But it's also a case of in the future, are these um, standards going to become more and more stringent, in which case, can we still achieve those with what we've got, or are we going to need the sort of novel technologies? So it'll be definitely interesting to see what sort of levels we can get down to. Um, but uh, and your other question was how are we compared to yeah, the I EU. I suppose there are lots of distractions going on throughout Europe at the mm. moment. Um, we're possibly in a slightly better position than mm. some others, and I'm just wondering whether where everybody's putting. Not all the other member states are uh, putting resources into it, and how, how we're mm. performing, I suppose, um, performing against them. Like, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure, to be quite honest. I know there are other um, countries looking at phosphorus removal, um, which is where we got the 0.1 um, figure from. That's what we're trying to achieve because that's been done elsewhere. Mm. Um, but as a whole, I don't know, maybe someone else would be a better place to. Answer yeah, sure. I, I think England and Wales or the UK take it very seriously, yeah. WFD. I think compared to many other countries, we've, the, the monitoring programmes, not just water quality, but other monitoring programmes are much more detailed. And because they're more detailed, we're finding more problems. And because we're finding more problems, we, we've got more failures. Uh, and so it's, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're creating quite a large challenge for ourselves because, because of the detail of the programme. While in some other countries, I'll just have you know, one sample in a huge catchment, you know, right at the bottom end, where you know, everything's buffered, and everything seems okay at that point. But in the UK, we're, we're monitoring all the way up, up the catchment, and we find you know one point of a problem, and then and then you've got failure. So, yes. Thank you. Okay, so if there are no more questions, um, I think if we're right, do we have uh, some time at the end as yes. well? Yes. Um, yeah, okay. <coughs> so, to summarise, SIP2, we're going to have this unprecedented amount of data on a wide range of substances. Um, we're developing the capabilities to analyse and manage it all. Um, so ultimately, we are able to understand the current risks of non-compliance so that companies can start to address um, the future changes that may happen to these policies and regulations. I hope you've all taken something away from this useful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.